So ladies and gentlemen, um, what we're going to do is we're going to graph y equals ax squared minus 5x minus 2. Now to go ahead and do this, the first step that I'd expect you to be able to, to do is to first label what is a, what is b, and what is c. It's not a requirement, but I think it's something that's very helpful, especially when you guys are looking at graphing. Because therefore, so the first thing we can do is identify a, which is the coefficient of your quadratic term which is x squared, so the coefficient there is 1. b is the coefficient of our linear term, x, which is negative 5. And c is our constant, which is negative 2. I just think it's helpful whenever you guys are solving or graphing quadratics, when you have it in this form, to write in that, to write your a, b, and c. Huh? When a just represents the coefficient, so the number that's multiplied by x squared. So that's just going to be 1 in this case. Um, so now we need to identify the axis symmetry. If you guys remember the axis symmetry, the formula for that was x equals opposite of b divided by 2a. So now all we're simply going to do is plug in the opposite of b. Well, if b is negative 5, the opposite of that would be positive 5 over 2 times a, which is 1. So therefore, I have 5 halves. Ugh, right? Not very good. That's a fraction. Now, we could convert our fraction to a decimal, which would be uh, 2.5. Um, and that's kind of helpful if you guys can visualize that, especially when you're graphing. Because if I'm going to graph this uh, 2.5, I know that 2.5 is roughly going to be in between you know, 2 and 3, right? So we could say 2.5 is right here. You could do it 1 and 1 half. Yeah, it's a mixed number. That's perfectly fine. But I'm going to show you why I'm leaving it as a fraction here in just a second. So I draw my axis symmetry. Um, now the next thing we need to do is we need to find our vertex. Now remember, the vertex has the same x coordinate as your axis symmetry. So on my little table here, I'm going to say, all right, the x value of the vertex is 5 halves. What is the y value? So to do that, I need to plug in the x value of my axis symmetry in for x. So I have 5 halves squared minus 5 times 5 halves minus 2. Got it? Maybe? Kind of? A little bit? Sort of? So now we can simply simplify. 5 half squared is going to equal 25 fourths minus 25 halves minus 2. Right? Because remember, the 5 is just 5 over 1. So when you multiply a whole number times a fraction, you just multiply straight across. All right? So now it comes into a problem, though. We have this expression 25 fourths minus 25 halves minus 2. How do we go ahead and do that? Well, remember, when adding and subtracting fractions, they all have to have the same denominator. So here, I have 4, 2, and 1 as denominators. My common denominator is going to be 4. So I'm going to need to multiply this by 2 over 2, and this one by 4 over 4. Did I see that? OK. So now, I can now simplify this to 25 fourths minus 50 fourths minus 8 fourths. Well, 25, min 25 fourths minus 50 fourths is a negative 25 fourths. Minus 8 fourths is going to equal a negative 33 fourths. Now, again, you might say, all right, well, how am I going to graph negative you know, 33 fourths? Well, remember, ladies and gentlemen, we can rewrite this as a mixed number or, again, as a decimal. But if you're going to think about this as a mixed number, how many times does 4 go into negative 33 or 30, negative 33? Negative 8 times with the remainder of 1. So therefore, we could also rewrite this as negative 8 and 1 fourths. Or that's also the same thing as n negative 8.25. Which you, I think we'd all agree that the decimal is the easiest one to like visualize to graph. But at least we know that that's going to be at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So it's going to be between 8 and 9. It's just going to be like 1 fourth left. So now we've identified the vertex. Now I would create that as like your first and second step. So you first go ahead and identify your axis symmetry. Then you identify the vertex by plugging in the axis symmetry for x, solving for y. And now the next step is just to pick two more, two more numbers to the left or to the right. But remember, I, I remind you, I want you to pick two numbers that are close to the axis symmetry, but then are towards 0, because it, usually it's nice to have them at 0. So the two points I'm going to pick are 1 and 2. So to finish up my graph, all I'm simply going to do is plug in 2 for x, 5 times 2 minus 2. 
So I'll plug in 2. And when I do that, I get 4 minus 10 minus 2. So 4 minus 10 is negative 6. Minus 2 is negative 8. Then I plot that number. So I go 2, negative 8. And then let's do 1. y equals 1 squared minus 5 times 1 minus 2. 1 squared is 1 minus 5 times 1 is 5, so that's negative 4. That's negative 6. So at 1, I have negative 6. So I go over to 1, down 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Then you guys can see I have this beautiful graph that looks like that. But what's nice about using that, again, now we can use the axis symmetry to reflect this over. So I simply just reflect that about those points. And then I can finish my graph. And if I needed to include other points, I could do 5 halves. I could do 3, which would also be negative 8. And then 4, which again is going to be negative 6. So those are just a reflection <coughs> of that. Make sense? Kind of? A little bit? Más o menos? No. Texting your friend? 